How's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ask That Podcast on YouTube. I did something like this a long time ago, but I did not look and see if I uploaded it. You know, it's supposed to be a multi-part. I'm going to do this one video. Y'all know, you know, I started reading comics in the 70s. Started hitting comic shops in the early 80s. By the time the 90s boom happened, I was in the comic shop at least once a week, sometimes two or three times a week. And I was fine, mean, you know, I bought on a bunch of fags going on, you know, I bought, I bought, you know, a lot of the image stuff, the value, a little bit of the value here and there, you know, all that kind of stuff. The one fad I did not get into, partially because by the time it started up, I was not hitting the comic shop that much, was the bad girl comic craze. Now, there's some, I got a lot of these comics. I've been slowly picking them up here and there. I'm going to show off some. Some of these I've shown before, some I haven't. These are all going to be the lesser known titles from this. this you're not going to see, you know, some Razor. You're not going to see Framparella. There's one that's kind of known here. You're not going to see. Uh, and you're not going to see uh, Vampirella. You're not going to see uh, stuff like that. What you will see is the lesser known ones like Helena Taking Back the Night from Lightning Comics. Right here, this is Lightning Comics started off there putting out stuff like Bloodfire, the first superhero with the HIV virus. And that was his that was his, his power was he was basically Captain America. They found this formula that did the same thing as Captain America for you, but your body's immune system killed it. So how do you stop that? You kill the immune systems. They infected him with the HIV virus, let it become full blown AIDS, shot him with this stuff, and as long as he had this super soldier serum in him, he was yo and vulnerable almost. And his fire also caught on his blood also caught on fire if it hit air. Well, that did okay. They introduced Helena in one of their other series called Purge. I think it was the name of it. And Helena just blew up. So they decided, what the fuck? We're going to make Helena. And they went and started baking like piles and piles of these bad girl comics. Now we got Steven Zykowski was a writer and production manager. Terrell Lawrence is doing the pencils. James M. Anderson, the anchor and letterer. Greg Weeks, the color covers. This is from April 95. These are black and white, kind of outlaw like comics. Sometimes the art's good, sometimes the art ain't worth the shit. Helena is still around. She was bought by, excuse me, Avatar as part of their Boundless line, which is just straight up porn comics. Where's here? Despair. You know, these were targeted at teenagers. And to be honest, you know, your average person in the comic shop, your average in the comic shop is not getting laid as often as they want to. This was targeted at them. And these sold very well, for what I've been told. Uh, for when they really started becoming popular until the matter the very tail end of it, I was going back in the comic shop again, and the owner's like, yeah, because they sell, you know, it's a lot, it still sells fairly well. And he was one of the comic shop owners where it said you had to be, you know, if it was R-rated, he's like, oh, man, I got to see your ID. Unless I got a note from your parents saying, hey, I don't care. You know, he was, he was not super strict, but, you know, he was... Protect his ass, because this comic shop is directly across from elementary school, and that's what you need on the news. You know, comic shop across the street from elementary school selling porn to an eight-year-old. You know? He wasn't going to risk it. You see, the art in this one's not bad, and the story is not that bad. And we got a lot of pages. That's an art. Robert Lopez. But look at this. Lightning starts back issues. That's all the stuff. There's the Kiss of Death. First appearance in Purge is now a $4 comic. The Platinum Psalm one's $15. So. That's Lightning. Well, Lightning, I'll spit on this. Actually, my aunt got this one. This is their variant cover. It's cover B. This is Cynthia. Uh, my aunt just passed away. And I'll tell I mentioned everyone's my crazy aunt. She passed away 2019. I'm remembering right. She passed away. But she had, there was a... Antique mall over in Biloxi, the Abbeville area. She'd go there and look around. Once she found, anytime she found comic sheets, she bought one. She's like, she gave it to me as part of my career. Like, don't let the little ones look at it. I'm like, uh. And I flipped through thinking, now it's in color. We got Joseph Adams, the creator, Rod Perry, pencils and inks, Paul Abrams, pencils on the cover I have, James Anderson's letter, Gorilla Graphics, computer colors, editors, the Zeisnowski guy. And this is from 97, so it's two years later. And it is, you know, a lot of button boobs, a lot of demons, you know. A lot of, a lot of metalheads read this shit, especially one of the com companies I'm going to get to in just a few, Chaos. But, and from my understanding, Cynthia only had this one issue. 
So I guess it didn't sell that way. You see, my copy's kind of beat up. All right, so that's Lightning. Now we're going to go to this. Now this one I only have one issue from. This is Blackout Comics. This is Cyanide and Ice issue one. This is not their first issue. There is a zero issue. And this is special bonus. First appearance of Sly and Furious. No one of them companies that just specialized in doing, well, they did color, but, you know, Bad Girl Comics. Created by Brian Schoengood. Written by John R. Platt. Pencils by Mike Leakey. Inks by David Mallory. Colors by Fred Galpern and Ron Lesnar. Color assist, Billy K. Cover my Mike Leakey, David Mallory, Fred Galpern. Uh, but, uh, 95. And it's bi monthly. I don't think there's any more issues. I actually read this one. This is not bad. Some of these actually have pretty decent little stories in them. And the art in this is not horrible. It's a lot better than some of the others. I mean, the color helps. As you see, you know, there we go. You know, you have a lot of boobs and butts. A lot of, you know, making sure. You know, a lot of cleavage shots. Basically, they were a comic book equivalent of what my generation called Skinamax After Dark, you know. 10 o'clock at night on Cinemax, they show showing them European movies with titties and bush. That's what this was. So you ain't getting the titties and bush usually. And then we got our special preview with Jake Jacobson, David Mowry doing working on. This is Sly and Furious. Now this ain't nearly as good as this dude with a dog. It's kind of stupid. Even though I like that piece of art. Oh, man. Solar blading roller dudes. Kids, blades, and creatures from outer space. Did this ever come out? That just screams, hey, we're trying anything we can come up with. Harry Carey. That was probably their biggest book from Black Out. I forgot they did Harry Carey. They did action figures and all that. Now, this is one I'd never heard of. This is Dan Parsons Harpy. This is the preview. It's from Ground Zero. Ground Zero was uh, Mike Wolfer's company, if I remember right. This is Mature Readers. I'm still in 18, of course. And it's black and white. We got Dr. Dan Parsons, scripts and pencils. Inks is Damon Willis. Letters and logos, S.G. Bass. The additional inks, wash painting, Dr. Dan, Orphan Underground Studios, blah, 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 blah. And it is another black and white, very outlaw looking comic. Not bad. I sat down and read. Damn it, it never fails. But yeah. And I think there's only like one other issue of this. I'm definitely going to go grab it. I love this. This was just crazy. This felt more like 80s underground than 90s. And this is from 96. I don't remember ever hearing about this. I got some artwork in that. Ooh, cover up the boobies. Mike Wolfer did Widow, and he works for uh, Boundless. Okay, the big one that's in here. And this is, I said, not all, and they're not all well known. This one's kind of well known. Is Lady Death. Lady Death became huge. Eve have already been out for a little while, but Lady Death was the big one. This is the lingerie issue, which at one time this was an expensive ass comic. Don't know why. I mean, first thing they wanted what? $2.95 for this. Fuck that. This is Chaos. And now she's owned by Avatar, I think, or maybe Ron Polito. And it's just sketches of her in lingerie. You got Jim Ballant. We got Joseph Michael Lisner. We got Mark Morales, I'm just saying names I recognize, Joe Quesada, Justin Iano, yeah, Mitch Bird, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just, yeah, Lady Death. Some good art, some shit art, yeah. Well then, I also have these two issues. This is Lady Death, what is it? Heaven and Hell, three issues, three and four. She did a lot of, like, many. Blade Death became a lot of major. Got Mumpolito, the writer, illustrator Stephen Hughes, and a lot of metalheads on the Red Ones, Lady Death at Chaos. And they had great art. Stephen Hughes was a great art. They had a lot of really good artists working on uh, Chaos stuff. I actually got a few issues of Evil Ernie put away somewhere. But that's not that's not bad girl. Lady Death is one that's still known. She had her own little animated movie, you know, and she's still kind of around. And these always had a oh, oh, well, I think you would see bad girl books. Everyone always had a pile of pages in the back advertising where you can get more issues of stuff. This is issue four. 
Same creative team. It's like Lady Demon's name of that one. They always have really good coloring on their stuff on those. Always. You got your letters page, trading cards, all that stuff. And then the only other bad girl thing I have from Chaos is Pandemonium. This is issue one I've had this for a long time. 16 months until the end. Uh, if I remember right, 98. Yeah, they were supposed to end in 2000. I think they did. I actually think the company was just running out of money. Because their, the, their time in the shine was over. This one I know nothing about. I'll flip through it, but that's it. Who worked on this? I didn't even say who worked on this. We've got Brian Polito, created, written by Justin McCann, Peter Vale, illustrated, inked by Wellington Diaz, colored by Spectrum Color. Okay. So not bad. It looks decent. You notice there's not a lot of ads. It's all in the back. Uh, then, well, Rob Liefeld's like, fuck it, I'm going to get on this. He created Evangeline. This is an angel. It's, uh, what's her name? Something Christian. Christy Christian or something like this. This one can be less sleazy than the others because of the Liefeld. Issue three. Evangeline Power, and it's, uh, let's see. Rob Liefeld's creator and plot, co-plot and script, Robert Napton. Pencil is John Stinsman. Anchors is Marlo Aquazella, Jonathan Sybil, Danny Meeky, Colors, Dan Sheridan, Colors Operation, Extreme Colors. Kathy Christian is a creator. This is from 96. I've not read any of this yet. Even Glory was doing it, you know. I was like, fuck it, jump on the bandwagon and sell some comics. And Evangeline, there's quite a few Evangeline stuff, so I'm guessing it sold fairly well. I don't know. I was not. 96 is one of those years where I would walk in the comic shop, okay, look, I'm picking up this, this, and, you know, I had a pool box. I put my shell pool box and I hold that. You know, I did not. It was late 97 and then 98, 99 when I started getting back into hanging out at the comic shop buying all kinds of stuff. Extreme Destroyer, okay, that's what time frame this is. And look, the minifigures, y'all remember those? How many people actually remember the, 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 the mini? There was Cyber Force and there was a uh, Youngblood minifigures for a very short while. And they didn't sell. Remember, TV Toys had them forever. And then the last one, this is from Antarctic Press. This is Warrior on Ariel. This is like kind of a parody of it in a way. Antarctic Press jumped in on it and Start off as many, and I, I want to say Warrior Non Ariella still comes out. I'm not sure. I don't keep it with Arctic Press. They put out a lot of stuff, but I got one whole mini series and like an issue of another. So no, I don't have a whole one. I got issues one, two, and three. I got almost a whole one. And this is the Ghost of the Past. It's black and white. Um, Anthony D. Zakari is the story. Craig Baby R is the art. These are not bad. I've read a few here and there, and the big thing worried on RL is that they it got popular if they put out the first indie action figure. The worried on RL action figure, which was a big thing. Like it came out and like day after it came out, they were going for three times what you pay. Because people wanted because there was no there wasn't indie figures back then. It was like a fifteen, twenty dollar figure back when you average trigger was five bucks and you know, McFarlane stuff's running a little more. And in the back they always have, you know, some Ben Dunn stuff, Silver Cross. I said, these aren't as sleazy as the others. Uh, as far as art's decent, it's got an anime feel to it. My thing about it is, I'm not, the story is decent, but nothing great. And they never did trades, and I'm more of a trade guy now. I prefer trades. And how did I get all these? Uh, most of these, there's the last one. We'll go through it. Okay, all these Warrior on Ariellas came in a random lot off eBay. Or, yeah, off eBay. Read them a lot of comics, like, you know, 10 pounds of comics or whatever. This I actually picked up at a Books a Million. You can see the Books a Million. Story. These, same thing as the Warrior on Ariellas. 
This was the same thing. That was the same thing. I said Cynthia and then Helena. All these came that way. I did not search these out. I just happened to find them. So that's some Bear Girl stuff. And I'm going to be doing another one. I got There's one company that specializes in Bear Girl stuff. They're kind of Southern based, but they are Southern based. I got a pile of their stuff. I'm going to do a video on them after I finish up this one. You know, when this one's going up. Y'all know I'll film this shit way in advance. I mean, I've been filming with a mount for a while now. And every once in a while, you'll see a video popped up that definitely ain't filmed on a mount. That's uh, because it's been sitting in the backlog for a while. But I'm out. Hope y'all enjoyed that. Remember, if you did, give me that thumbs up. Leave a comment. Comment. Yeah, what bad girl comics did you read? Did you read any of them? Are you just reading Vamp right now? I'm going to revamp it. I have a huge stack of Ramparella comics. I don't know where they are. And so I've got them in these big lots. Uh, I'm out, everybody. Bye-bye.